previously on Breaking Shock. One imaginary apple, no. I have to eat the rest. Hello, Minasan. Flemmy Des. It's a really sad day. You might have seen it in the introduction. I got Robo Chike broke yet again. I'm, <laughs> I'm so incompetent. Uh, we are going to do complex numbers, but different yet again. Talking about the powers of I. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, powers of I are really important. We need this for a certain series expansion. What the fuck, Papa, did you just say matrix exponentials? No, don't spoil everything, mate. Oh, I, I hate this guy down there in the corner. He just spoiled everything for next parts. What an absolute idiot. Yes, we really need this later on for matrix exponentials. Sounds quite weird and exciting and adventurous, but yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just something that's there. Okay, we are going to deal with it. Now for the powers of I. Powers means to the positive and negative integer powers. We are going to start off with the easiest case, i to the zero of power, okay? i to the zero of power is basically simply i to the one minus one of power, okay? Meaning it's i times the multiplicative inverse of i. It's a square matrix, also it's invertible. And well, matrix times its inverse is going to result in the identity. Coolio, okay? something that works. Now, i to the first power, if you only have one apple, then you only have one apple, okay? This is going to result in i. Coolio, really hard thing to do right here. Now, here, here comes the most amazing part. i squared, what is this going to result in? I wonder, maybe by definition it's negative to identity? It, <laughs> maybe, okay, we, we don't know yet. By, by definition, we have found this out. It's the identity, but with a negative sign of wrong, with a little scalar. Now, here comes finally something where we have to think a bit about i to the third power. Multiplication works just like with real numbers. Okay, if we have i to, no, that, that was the identity matrix. Oh, i, identity. If we have i to the third power, that's i squared times i. Okay, I'm going to decompose it for the math chats out there. Meaning i squared by definition is negative, the identity matrix. So we are going to end up with negative one times something is just negative something in itself. Negative i. Now, let us move on. By the same procedure, i to the fourth power is going to result in i squared times i squared. Meaning this is negative one times negative one is going to result in the identity yet again. Maybe you can see something. We have done four iterations and ended up with the identity yet again. What is going to happen if we were to take a look at i to the fifth power, for example? Well, this is nothing other than i to the fourth power times i, okay? Which is nothing other than one times i is going to result in i. Now, here's the really interesting part. The powers of i actually make up a cyclic group, if I remember correctly. They should make up a cyclic group. Cyclic means if you raise it to a certain power, you are going to end up with the identity at some point yet again. Meaning, if we were to raise stuff to the fourth power, okay, we would always end up with the identity. If you were to raise i up to the fifth power, then you are going to end up with i yet again. If you add to the exponent 4, you are going to end up with the state you were in before, okay? If you have i to the sixth power, it's negative identity matrix times um, i to the fourth power, which is going to result in negative the identity, and so on. We are going to put this into casework notation later in the game. But now let us take a look at negative powers. For example, what about i to the negative one, okay? The multiplicative inverse. Well, by definition, we know what this is, okay? By definition, our i, our imaginary unit, is supposed to be an orthogonal matrix, meaning it's just a transpose of this thing, meaning overall, this thing is nothing other than uh, zero, one, negative one, and zero, which is just negative i. Now, here's the cyclic property yet again. Okay, 
we went to our uh, identity matrix, okay, and then we reduced the exponent by one. Meaning, if we were here, it's a cyclic group, to reduce our um, exponent by one, okay, from four to three, i to the third power is exactly negative i, which is what we have right here. Okay, meaning we could take a wired guess and say what is about i to the negative two power negative squared. Well, if we were to go two steps backwards from our identity matrix, same thing here, we are going to end up with, well, negative the identity matrix. Is this the case? Okay, negative the identity matrix. Is this something that holds? Well, let us take a look, let us decompose this. This is the same as i to the negative one power times i to the negative one power, meaning this is nothing other than negative i times negative i. Okay, negative and negative becomes positive, leaving us with i squared. And thus, i squared is by definition negative the identity. Okay, let us go one step backwards and then we have i to the negative third power. Once again, we could take a wild guess and say, okay, three steps backwards, okay, da, da, we are going to end up with i. Is this the case? Well, this is the same as i to the negative two power times i, leaving us with negative the identity, negative one times i is going to give us negative, um, negative i. I, I just noticed i to the negative one power. I'm I'm terribly sorry. We are going to get um, negative one times negative i is obviously going to result in i. I I don't know why I did that. This is just something that happened. And now i to the negative fourth power is going to result in well i to the negative two times i to the negative two with negative one times negative one is just the identity matrix and so on. You see, it is cyclic yet again. And now we can basically turn this into some nice notation. What is up with i to the kth power? i to the kth power, I would like to say that k is, um, yeah, we're going to put this here in the, never mind, we're going to put this here in the casework. Okay, what is for example with um, the identity matrix? When are we going to end up with the identity matrix? Well, this is under the condition that we have k being equal to zero and then four and then eight, for example, or for example, negative four. Okay, how can we put this into nice notation? Well, this is nothing other than k being equal to four times n. And we want, yeah, this is what I wanted, n to be element of the positive and negative integers. I hope this does make sense. Okay, if we plug zero into here, you are going to get zero. If we plug one into here, you're going to get four, blah, blah, blah. What about, um, yeah, let us move on with i. How are we going to get to i? Well, i are we going to get if we have one and five, and if we were to have um, negative three, blah, blah, blah. Meaning this is basically nothing other than how are we going to get to five? Well, this is four n plus one. Does make sense, okay? If you were to have negative one, for example, you're going to get negative four plus one is negative three, it works out. If you were to have zero in here, you're going to get one. And you can also work with modulus, for example, if you put this into modulus notation, it's, it's also quite easy. Then what next? We're going to have negative the identity. Negative the identity is for k being equal to, well, with a square right here, or for example, with negative two. So next up would be the number six. How are we going to get there? Well, this is nothing other than 4n plus two, right? Yes, if we plug zero into here, we are going to get two. If we plug one into here, we are going to get um, six. If we plug negative one to there, we are going to get negative two. This works out. And in the end, negative the um, imaginary unit for k being equal to, well, there's only one case left that we are going to have. Possibly this is 4n minus one, probably. Let us see. We are going to get here by having three or seven or for example, um, negative one. Okay, yeah, this is something that we need. 4n minus one. If black zero into here, we are going to get negative one. If black one into here, four minus one is going to give us three. If we black two into here, we are going to get, um, yes, 
uh, 8 minus 1, 7, and so on. And this is it. Those are the powers of i, and they are really important. We need this for a series expansion. Okay, if you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy the teachers I create or support channel on Patreon. And up until the next video, have a rip Hakurumo Chalk day. See ya. <laughs> Ich sehe die ganzen Enden. Nicht mehr zu Hause.